Well, wouldn't you know, <sighs> ran out of camera space right at the end of the video. That always happens to me, but sometimes I just let it ride and I'll be in the middle and just be like, <coughs> it just cuts off. So if you're watching this video, there's a part one to this and uh, it's much longer. <laughs> Assuming I don't go on for another 25 minutes. But I really thought I don't have any, you know, editing software and I don't have the time for that crap. And uh, so I wanted to say that because the last part was kind of the most crucial component of it, talking about evolution, creationism, and how, you know, they both fall short of the mark. There seems to be something deeper going on. And it seems that it's almost... What's the word, I guess? I feel like sometimes a lot of folks... Well, no, I can't see, I can't say that. I have to figure out how to word this. I guess I, for myself, find that I tend to clam up and bite my tongue on the issue of creationism or evolution because I don't have enough information to make a proper assessment of the bigger picture of why things are the way they are. But from the work I've done, the research I've done on religions, history, um, psychology, the needs of man, how our brains work, as well as the evolutionary evidence and the lack of, and the way that we fill in the blanks, I've come to the conclusion that the world is a damn amazing place. Of course, it goes without saying. I can't say whether it's an exceptional thing or that it's just something normal in the universe. We talk about how there must be alien life and that there must be other planets that harbor life. Maybe, maybe not, but it doesn't matter. This is our planet. The point being that there are certain things here that we can't express in words as humans, no matter how hard we try. And often those are religious-based things, or spiritual things, you may say. But I found that if you start to talk about how you just feel a presence, that you feel that there's something greater. And I'm not talking about a god looking down on us with a beard. Because one person put it well, he said, it was like Einstein said, he says, uh, he says, whenever I'm thinking really hard about a subject, that's when I can feel God. I can hear God, is what he says. And the idea was that there are so many folks looking externally for God and for morals and for values when everything we have is right here. Everything we need is right here. And I don't mean in your individual mind. I'm talking about in all of our minds. Because as soon as we start to respect the collective as being the word of God, and that means humans. And that sounds, I know, very pious and very arrogant, but I don't mean it that way. I should explain it a little better. No one person has a monopoly on truth. It doesn't matter how much you think you know. It doesn't matter how much information you know or how religious you are or what experiences you've had. As one person, nobody has a monopoly on truth. It takes a consensus reality to understand what's really going on. That doesn't mean that if a certain amount of people believe something, it must be true. This means that you weigh the amount of people that believe something and those that don't. You weigh the options and the evidence they have and the reasons why a person may want to prove or not prove something. Because often something things aren't disproven merely because people assume it's not worth their time to disprove it. In other words, if there was a group arguing that the sky is red, you know, would anybody really step in? I mean, the flat earthers have their little thing going. They don't really get attacked too much because most people believe the earth is round. It's not worth the time and the energy. But when it comes to religion and evolution, it is worth the time to discuss. Because I think that the belief that we need to live by somebody else's values is what's holding us back in a lot of regards. However, the belief that science is going to bail us out of anything uh, spiritual or help us understand uh, through the through the science that we've already done anyway through the evidence that we already have if we think that that's sufficient to explain where we come from then we're not doing enough homework but it's scary to say that we don't know on either end to realize that in the 1800s we were able to finally find oh my god we're made of cells it's true we're made of these tiny little things and what since then We've discovered so much more about genetics and biology and 
this has helped us to explain away a lot of the delusions we had in the past, you know. But at the same time, it's raised a lot of new questions about why, what we are doing here. A good example is, why did we evolve intelligence? A person might not think much about that, you know. Well, of course, it helps us survive, right? Does it, though? It doesn't help us survive. It helps us survive now. Without intelligence now, we couldn't get by. But in the long run, if you look at the planet, by creating intelligent people, it created a whole lot of problems. I shouldn't say by creating intelligence. I should say if natural selection or evolution chose intelligence, you know, because for the last hundred thousand years, we've been about the same. We, our cranial capacity, and this is something uh, when people talk about how much smarter can we get and, and whatnot. Uh, you know, even animals that are much larger, have larger brains than us, aren't as smart. Why? Because it takes much more brain power to, for a whale, for example, to to get to all parts of his body. I believe whales have a few brains, if I'm not mistaken. But so do humans. I mean, we've got a gut, gut brain. We have neurons all over our body, um, in our organs. And, and our brain does communicate with our guts through neurons and, you know, and, and chemical signal, signals. Uh, so... <laughs> kind of losing my track here, but uh, the brain cannot get any larger and the human body cannot get any larger. According to what I've read so far, that, that our brains and bodies are at the perfect ratio to where we can get the maximum amount of neural activity without having too large of a body to where it takes more neurons to run the body so we can't use as much for brain power. Um, so, it seems like we're kind of at an evolutionary, like, uh, not a standstill, because we can still utilize the capacity we have better, but that we may not be evolving towards any, you know, other beings, that humans are almost, you know, it's amazing to think here we are, and we've evolved as hairless apes, and that we think and we reason and we build these cities and destroy each other and kill each other, and much of it is genetic related, and we can be totally aware of the things that we're doing and still be doing them. And it doesn't seem like an evolutionary advantage because overpopulation always leads to decimation okay of a species uh, but the whole thing about you know complexity that you know the 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 second law of thermo thermodynamics you know entropy everything falls apart that uh, why does everything disintegrate yet evolution builds more and more and more into this more and more complex structure to become what it is now. And all I can say is that it seems and feels like nature's playing a game. Like nature is is a self-fulfilling consciousness that as things evolve, we all become part of it. The trees, the bees, everything. It's all an organism. And by even saying that, you instantly get put in this like floaty religious group and at a point, it just doesn't matter. You know what you know, and hopefully you have enough faith in something in your life to be able to be happy. The one thing I've found is that delusions can make people happy, but lying to yourself doesn't make me happy. So I have to be totally honest and look at every avenue. When I've exhausted all my resources on a subject and it can't be proved one way or another, or I find it's irrelevant, then I can set it up and say I've really tried my best. And with evolution and creationism, you know, I've tried to take an understanding of both sides and empathize. But there's components missing from both sides. The fact that we're using Darwin and his theory that's 150 years old, and that we're not even trying, you know, not even attempting to modify it. I mean, it's almost like people are afraid. If you don't agree with Darwin's theory, then you're labeled as almost a heretic in the community. So, uh, I would say that even, you know, from the quotes I've heard, Darwin himself said, he said if it were ever shown that, you know, an organism had created, had been created spontaneously, or quickly, instead of, you know, over a long period of time, then he said it would render his theory, you know, inadequate. And that's kind of, you know, with the Cambrian period, and that's what happened. It seems like all these creatures popped up out of nowhere, and so it seems like there's 
points in evolution where there's these spurts, these amazing growths, and where that comes from, I have no idea. I've had theories that maybe it was a cosmic rays, you know, maybe the universe has more genetic mutations due to some cosmic force, and would that be called God? Do I think that there's a man-like consciousness that's controlling the destiny of humanity? Hell no, I don't. I think that's ludicrous. That's anthropomorphizing God, and that's something that humans can't do. Our narrow band of spectrum that we can see with our eyes. <laughs> it's silly to think that we, we, we can really grasp anything that's going on around us, but... I guess the only reason I find this to be worth talking about is because it seems to be an issue of contention with people. It seems to be the one issue people fight about the most, you know. Anybody who believes in evolution is, you know, just a dumb scientist who, you know, eh, well, this is what people, some pe creationists believe, and that all the scientists believe that anybody who believes in a god or a higher energy is some kind of religious fanatic. And they're both wrong. There's certain things that you just can't express in words, but I did my best. It took a while. Anyway, better go. Let's get